All right, so we know that design principles or lack of design principles can make or break a design, but learning graphic design principles is not enough. We also need to learn how to apply design principles to real compositions. Now, the problem is that when we learn design principles or design theory from a book, for example, we learn them as abstractions. So we really don't know how to apply and take that knowledge and apply it to real design settings. So in this lesson, I'm gonna take a very old and bad design of mine, and I'm going to redesign it applying graphic design principles in order to show you how simple design rules can elevate a design, but also to demonstrate how understanding and knowing how to apply design principles will dramatically and immediately improve your graphic design skills. All right, so here I am in Inkscape 1.4. This is my old design that I made like 15 years ago. And it's a very bad design. It's a terrible design. And this is back when I was teaching myself design in my 30s. As you can see, there are many problems with this. For example, there's a lot of dead space that really shows that I'm not using a grid for this. I'm not using a grid for neatly aligning my graphic elements and for positioning them in a way that we find aesthetic and in a way that communicates the message effectively. Also, I don't have any hierarchy here, which is crucial for a poster like this. I don't have a clear hierarchy. I'm not using dominance. I'm not using a bolder typeface. I'm not using a legible font to create that hierarchy of information that I need for such a poster. Also, I have these very bad graphic elements that I found on the internet and I just put them there. I don't have a clear color scheme that will make this more attractive, that will direct people's attention to what's going on in, in, in this message. So as you can see, it's, this is clearly uh, an example of lack of graphic design principles. Now I'm going to go through the process of redesigning this in order to show how you can actually apply very simple design principles and elevate this very bad composition. All right, so some ground rules first. I already did a couple of things before starting this tutorial in order to speed up the process. But the one thing, one thing I did was take the image of the guy and vectorize it. Why? Because I wanted to change how it looked like in terms of features and color. I wanted to be something more like an illustration. And that was a very simple process that's beyond the scope of this tutorial, but it's something I did. Also, I already have the text that I'll be using, although it's in plain text form. And finally, I have this color scheme or palette that I grabbed from a Swiss style color palette generator. Something to know here is that from the get go, I'm already using or emulating a, a graphic design style, in this case, Swiss style. And this is very important because when we model what works, we are speeding up the process, but also we are ensuring that we are creating a composition that has been proven over time. Also, it's a great way to start internalizing and understanding understanding graphic design rules. Another thing is that I am using a modular grid. This document here that I have is a ledger tabloid uh, document, which is 11 by 17 inches. So I created a modular grid for this particular uh, size. I'm gonna go to my guides here and I'm going to show you how this grid looks like. Now, I created this grid because even though Inkscape comes with a modular grid that you can apply, it's not really that great. This is what I created and I'm the this process the process for creating this grid is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but if you want a copy of this grid, just comment grid below and I'll just uh, send you a link to download it. All right, so I have my setup, right? I already have my setup here. So now I'm ready to start designing. So the first principle of design that we need to take into account is hierarchy, all right? In a poster such as this one, we want a clear hierarchy of the most important information to the least important information. 
Now, we can do hierarchy in different ways. A reasonable way to do it is in terms of position, but we can also create hierarchy in terms of color, in terms of size or dimension. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start composing. So here I have a, a piece of text, and this is probably the most important piece of information because this is the title of the event. All right, so I'm using here, let's see, I'm using some uh, nondescript type. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Montserrat. Here I have Montserrat. So I'm going to use an ultra ball for this because this is at the top of my hierarchy. All right, cool. So now we have the person, right? The person who's speaking at this event. So in now we have another piece of hierarchical information. So let's go ahead and just select all these uh, pieces of text. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, use the Montserrat type because that's the font family that I'll be using for this whole composition. All right, so I already have this in Montserrat. Now let's uh, increase the size of this. Let's put it here. Now this guy is from the University of Navarra in Spain. So this I can put here. And there's some information about this person. You know, he's a director of some department and, you know, very important person. So now I can just place this information here. Now, as you can see, all this information is within the parameters of the grid. OK, and I can be very specific. A grid is just a guide. OK, it's not something to be super nerdy about necessarily, but I could be nerdy and just put everything within the confines of the grid. But I'll just leave it like this. And let me apply some font weights. Let me use my snapping tool to snap my information. Now, if I already use the ultra bolt for the top level information, I'm going to keep in mind that hierarchy in terms of the font weights that I'll be using. So this is ultra bold. Well, let's go ahead and use bold for this uh, name. And now I can use semi bold. So here we have a normal uh, font weight for this information. Now we have the time of the event. So here, I'm just putting this information within these boxes here. Now, a modular grid means that you can move things around, like modular furniture, for example. So let's see. I'm going to just uh, wing it here and going to place this within these two boxes. Now, again, let me apply some font weight. And here I'm going to use semi bold again because I'm punching information, OK, in a hierarchical way. So let's see how it how it's going so far. We have top level information. Then we have second level information. And now I have these other levels of information, like in the third and fourth levels that I still want to highlight, but I don't want them to be primary information, but it's still important information. So this is the time of the event and the date. And now we have where the event will take place. So here I have a clear hierarchy of information, as you can see. And I've just, you know, used size, font weight, which is color to show how a reader must approach the information and how he or she must read the information. I have a clear hierarchy here. So now let's continue with the composition and then we'll adjust at the end. All right. So now I have my graphic. This is my main graphic. So 
what I'm going to do here is just, I'm going to position this graphic. I don't know, maybe like so. Maybe this graphic can be bigger, you know, because I want to make a bold statement and I want people to pay attention to this message. So for that, I need to demand that attention. So let me just add some dimension here. All right, making some adjustments here uh, so that, you know, all my text is in is very legible within the, the white space. So now I have my graphic here. Uh, I can make it a little bigger, a little bolder. All right, so now I'm going to clip it to make it all neat within the confines of the of the page document. All right, cool. So this is my main framework right now. Okay, so I have a composition, as you can see, which is better than the original and by only applying some design principles. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I mean, I could, I could leave it like this, but I'm going to just to add a couple of graphic elements that will maybe enhance uh, the composition in terms of aesthetics, but also to show you how a modular grid will help you place elements in a very consistent way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take these little squares and I'm going to do just like a, a little checkered background thing. All right, so here I have, you know, these checkered things that I added. It's just graphic elements. And I also added a whole background so that I'm not using the straight canvas from the program. All right, so I added all of my elements. So let's give some final touches to this composition by adding a color palette. Now, I already selected a palette from a Swiss style generator, and these are the colors I have. So let's uh, apply some color to this. All right, so here's a, a finished composition. I'm not saying this is award-winning, but what I am saying is that I have elevated my previous design and I have made something that works, okay? And this is the value of graphic design principles and knowing how to apply graphic design principles to a real design setting. Let's look at the composition without the guides. So here it is.